Sometimes it takes a certain strength of character to admit when we've made a mistake. After all, none of us really like to admit when we get things a little bit wrong. But to be able to do so, to be able to recognise a flaw and be able then to rectify it and say, hands up, this isn't the best that I could have done, is a very commendable trait with people. Which is pretty much what's happened with Volkswagen and the ID3. You see, despite them only launching the car four years ago, it did come in for a little bit of criticism from the press and public alike. There were software glitches and the quality wasn't quite what people had expected from Wolfsburg. So what have Volkswagen done? Well, rather than be bullish about it until they say, well, you'll just have to wait until we bring out a new one, they've got the sleeves rolled up and addressed some of those issues. Or have they? Welcome to this week's road test review. Welcome to the newly revised Volkswagen ID3. And as always, welcome to Auto EV. Now, before we get started on this week's rather wet road test review of the new Volkswagen ID3, it is of course that time when I'm going to ask you to make sure that you are subscribed to the Auto EV channel. Now, once you've done that, press the little bell button down below because then that way you'll be notified of our next videos uploaded and goes live. Once you've watched the video, if you have enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget, leave us your comments down below as well. Let us know what your thoughts are on the cars that review, such as the newly revised Volkswagen ID3 and of course on the Auto EV channel as a whole. So the ID3 from Volkswagen, what is it? Well, of course, it was Volkswagen's um, third pillar, if you like, in their people car um, sort of heritage, if you like, after the Beetle and the Golf. And as I say, to all intents and purposes, that's what they kind of gave us. They gave us a five door family hatchback, much like a Golf, that was fully electric. It wasn't an electric Golf. It was the first of the Volkswagens to be spun from the new MEB platform, of course, which has gone on to underpin quite a few cars, a lot of which was road tested, from the Volkswagen Group. But it wasn't perfect. You see, feedback from customers and press like us alike, so like, we weren't so keen on sort of like the cheap kind of plastics on the inside and this infotainment system wasn't that great. Yeah, it just kind of sullied the sort of experience with the ID3. And of course, if you're gonna build a people's car, then you gotta build what the people really want. And as I say, the people spoke up but what have Volkswagen done to address what they've said? But before we move on, let's have a little reminder of what the ID3 is all about. Well, it was Volkswagen's first dedicated battery electric vehicle sitting alongside the ubiquitous Golf in the C sector marketplace for five door family hatchbacks. It was the first product to use the company's new MEB electric platform that's gone on to underpin many new EVs from the wider group, including Cupra, Audi and Skoda. In 2022, the ID3 contributed almost 10,000 sales out of a total of 131,000 in total across the UK market, and that's across the entire Volkswagen passenger product lines. It's available with two battery sizes now, either a 58 kilowatt hour with a range of 266 miles, or a larger 77 kilowatt variant with a range of up to 347 miles. And prices start from just over £30,000 to just under £43,000, depending on that battery and trim level. However, given the amount of competition that's come out since the ID3 was first launched, and with more yet to come, is a mild facelift going to be enough to address all those issues that customers felt weren't quite right with the original car? Well, the only way that we're going to find that out is by putting it through the road test that actual car buyers trust when it comes to choosing their next electric vehicle and that is the Auto EV one. Now visually there are some styling changes. It might not look at it first, but there are some styling changes. And although they're small, they do add up to make, well, quite a big difference, I think. First of all, at the front, the big change is you no longer have that black plastic bit at the base of the windscreen and the bonnet. So it's all body color right up to the base of the windscreen. Now that sort of like elongates the car. It, it, it sort of like takes away sort of like that short stubby bonnet that the car had and perversely makes it look a little bit more like a conventionally powered car. Uh, you know, like a, an internal combustion engine car by giving it sort of like a, a slightly longer bonnet. But that's gone. That's the first big change. Um, you've also got sort of like new sort of like matrix headlights as well. So depending again on the option that you have, um, they will move around to kind of greet you when you first like approach the car uh, and they give good light at night as well. So that's a nice improvement as well. Down here, the, gone's the kind of mottled 
part that was sort of like that gave it a sort of like a kind of cutesy sort of look and they've added in these sort of like vents which is there for take airflow around here and then around the side of the alloy wheels but it gives the car a bit more of a kind of a bit more presence i think and again it's like perversely it makes it look like a more conventional sort of like internal combustion engine car and less radical than the first car was but I do like the new look. I think it's nice. It's sort of like, it, it, by adding these sort of like vents to the side, it sort of like just gives it a bit more of a kind of muscular sort of look to the front. Uh, you've got cooling down at the bottom here, and that's active as well. So the battery pack which is in there will get its airflow from here, and of course the flaps will open and close as and when they're needed. And then you now get this new panel here as well, just above the recessed number plate, which I'm probably thinking will be there for future tech as it becomes available. You still get your big prominent Volkswagen logo badge there and of course and of course you get your light bar that kind of runs across there as well and then the kind of big sweep of the wipers where they, they come out from that to the side of the screen. But yeah as I say it's a small changes but they're adding up to make a little bit of a difference I think. And again small changes around the side. There's some new wheel designs these are the 19 inch um, alloys on the car. Good nice profile on the tyres though. Um, what are they? The, 21550 R19s on the front so there's a good sort of like pliancy in those tyres which is quite nice. Um, what's changed here? Well the big change is they've done away with the decal, the sticker that they had in the back of the C-pillar here. Um, there's still a sort of like a nice contrast silver flash that runs across and of course you've still got the, 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 the biotone, the, sorry the duotone with the black roof as well but uh, getting rid of that sticker I think has made the world of a difference here. But again, it sort of looks a bit, well, golf-like almost. So again, it's kind of making it look a bit more like a conventional car and less radical than it was. But I don't think that's maybe a bad thing. I think people are going to be drawn to it because it's that easy transition from what they've known. You know, if they've been a golf driver, this is quite an easy step into it. Uh, nice big... Um, chunky door handles, that's nice, and then you get this sort of like black bit down at the bottom here, again just that pinching the bodywork in a little bit to re reduce the kind of visual bulk that you get there. And of course the roof flows back into this big rear spoiler to aid airflow. And when you look at it, it is quite a big spoiler that, it is quite a, a, a big old spoiler that's in the back of that car. Anyway, it's nice, I like it, and you see there's good airflow across the back of the car. Uh, rear wiper, obviously, which is nice. Obviously, you need it, especially on a day like today. Inset rear uh, brake light, as you'd expect. Now, this is the other change. These rear lights, so they've got different graphics in them, and then when you apply the brakes, you get a X. The brake lights with a little X kind of graphic on them. But these bits here, which were originally just reflectors, these are now part of the lights as well. So it comes into this boot. You can see more from the back where you've got that dual tone finish, the black with the blue. Not 100% sure about it. I don't mind it. It's all right. I do quite like it. What I don't particularly like, and I never have, is these silly, the silly badge here, this ID3, this white plastic. It looks like the thread you know the magnetic letters that kids stick on fridges i don't like that at all anyway there we go that's just me um rear badge that's your boot lid release which is really nice nicely integrated i do like that um it's nice and of course you get your usual sort of like parking sensors at the bottom and then your recess number plate so small changes but as i say they've added up i think to make a big difference in terms of the way the car looks they say it looks less radical than it does and it makes the car look a little bit more conventional and I don't think it's a bad looking car, I do like it. I don't think it's as nice looking as say the Cupra version, the Cupra Born I think has the sort of like the visual edge on this car. Um, and I say it's not quite got that kind of presence that I like about the Renault Megane E-Tech. But it's not what you'd call an ugly car. It's quite typical kind of Volkswagen. But as I say, all those little changes have made it look less rad radical and more conventional. Or certainly in my eyes. But what do you think? Is it enough? Should Volkswagen have done more? Was it fine the way it looked before? Do you have an ID3 and you like the way it looked? Or would this one tempt you more, those little changes? As always, let us know your thoughts down in the comments. Now, boot space, as you can imagine, has stayed the same. That's 385 litres, which is, it's all right. It's a decent size of boot. I mean, it's not the biggest in class. It's not the smallest in class. Um, it's a nice shape. It's a nice square shape. I don't have my, my suitcases today, unfortunately. But you can see there's plenty enough room in there for 
for at least three of the four suitcases that we normally use. Um, there's some underfloor storage as well. So your cables, uh, they come in these bags, they slot underneath the boot floor itself, so that's quite nice. And you get a standard 60-40 split rear seat, but you also get a load through facility as well. So you've got slightly longer loads and you still want to carry two passengers, then obviously you've got the ability to take them straight through there. Other than that, there's not really a huge amount to talk about in here. There's some little hooks on the side for just hanging sort of bags off, and there's a 12 volt socket in there there's no three pin socket there's no vehicle to load ability with the id3 still um i don't know where that's going to come in maybe future volkswagen products who knows but otherwise as i say for a, a five door family hatchback you're probably going to get away with a boot of that sort of size quite well now no real change in the rear accommodation of the car as you'd expect now it's built on Volkswagen's MEB platform, which means it's not shared with a combustion engine car, so you do have this open floor at the back as well. So there's no central tunnel if you're carrying a third passenger. However, you can only carry a third passenger if you go for the smaller battery car. If you go for the bigger 77 kilowatt hour car, you lose the ability to carry a third passenger um, because the seat's different because obviously you've got a bigger battery to, 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 um, to accommodate underneath there. So just be aware of that. The seats themselves, they are, they're comfortable, you know, there's there's a decent amount, you're certainly not going to um, complain about legs, leg room or foot room, there's certainly enough space there. You do sit slightly higher, the rear seats are raised a little bit, so you've got that kind of stadium style seating where you're slightly taller than the front two passengers, so you get a good view ahead of you. Headroom, however, is going to be slightly tighter, especially if it's got the sunroof fitted, uh, for people that are a bit over the six foot mark. I mean, I'm five seven, five eight. And whilst I've got plenty there, I can imagine if you're six foot, you'd certainly, you'd start to feel it close in on you, if you like. Uh, what else to talk about? Well, as I say, the seat, the bench itself is very comfortable. There's enough under thigh support. You don't feel your legs are being pushed up too much. You get two USB-C um, connectors at the back of the, the centre console there, so that's nice. Um, storage is all right. You get door bins, which will certainly take a water bottle. And you do get the flip-down armrest, as I say, with a couple of cup holders. And remember you've got that load through facility from the boot I was talking about. So if you're carrying rear passengers and you've got a longer load, then you can certainly do that. There's no problem there. Isofix points, they're nice and easy to get to. They're behind these plastic covers and they just clip back in when you're not using them. So you get one on either side, plus you get an additional Isofix point on the front passenger seat. So, good for the size of car, plenty of legroom, plenty of foot room, nice ability to carry three as long as you go for that smaller battery car. And the only other thing to mention is, say, is just if your car carrying six foot sort of like basketball players around with you quite a bit, just watch their heads because it gets a little bit tight in the back. Other than that, it's as you'd expect for this sector of car. Now, one of the biggest areas where customers' feedback was really taken notice of is in the interior and its quality or lack thereof in the initial car. And as I say, I quite liked the design of the original ID3, but there was no getting away from the fact that it wasn't very Volkswagen-like when it came to some of the plastics used. The dashboard felt a bit cheap and everything just didn't feel like you would expect, especially if you'd come from maybe you know a lifelong sort of like, uh, supply of Volkswagen, like Golfs and such like. And as I say, that's been really the main focus of this quality upgrade if you like and you can really really tell the difference um, gone is this kind of cheap plastic on the dashboard you've now got soft touch materials you've got a really nice soft kind of rubber top to the dashboard there this kind of faux leather kind of style in the lower half don't get me wrong there are still some cheaper kind of plastic still about and you know harder plastics i should say like on the the door bins and then down here but it feels more screwed together it does feel like a, a, a much more sort of like hewn from granite style that we've come to expect certainly from you know years ago from Volkswagen so there is certainly a big step up in terms of its quality it's not perfect though it still isn't perfect now we'll get on to that in a second and uh, what shall we talk about okay the design well the design has stayed the same and on the whole as I say I quite like it you get this small binnacle in front of the driver here which is configurable to a certain degree, um, but it gives you all the sort of like things that you need. So you've got your speed in the middle, you've got your range and your battery readout there, and obviously um, sort of like trip thing there. And then obviously on this side, you know, you can get things like, you know, obviously lane keep assist, it'll tell you if you're wandering out your lane and that type of thing there. So all that's good. You've also got the gear selector up on the column. It's very similar, I think, 
um, and I said it in the original road test that we did to the BMW i3 and I like that you know the little instrument binnacle here and then of course the, the, the gear selector up here this kind of rotary drive selector so you're going to drive or back to neutral or back for reverse or press the end for park so that remains and that's absolutely fine the other thing that remains is this infotainment screen now it was plagued with sort of like software issues it was laggy um you know it, sometimes it would just shut off and it just it felt like it just wasn't ready if i'm being honest with you that's what it felt like and they just put it out anyway and there was just there was always a bit of issues with it as such but thankfully they have now sort of like updated it but it's still 10 inch now the european cars get a 12 inch display but in the uk we only get this 10 inch and I'm, i believe it's to do with this light panel here this switch pack for the lights here which again i i didn't particularly like it in the first car i still don't like it where it is it's just weird being in there you've got sort of like fog lights uh, auto lights and then you've got your defrost for your window and, and your rear screen in there it's just a bit odd tucked away in there but i believe that's why we can't get the 12 inch display on the uk cars although again i am led to believe it's coming next year so i don't understand why there's kind of two facelifts if you like why why do you have to have the 10 inch now and then the 12 inch later would they not been better to hold off anyway they haven't um so yeah so this stays the same um you've got a uh, wireless apple carplay uh wired android auto um and then obviously you you, you can go into sort of like, you know your, your navigation uh here it's much faster to respond than the original one was um you know everything just works a little bit more kind of slick um than it did before so it is better there's no doubt about it but it still isn't perfect in my book. You know, there are other cars that do it better um, than Volkswagen out there. But there we go. What they've also done is retained these infernal touch sensitive controls. So slide for volume and then, you know, your heating and ventilation, you know, at the side here. See, and you end up touching things by accident. So I want to turn the heating up and I ended up touching the volume there. Um, you know, and they're not illuminated at night. Why are they not illuminated at night, Volkswagen? Why have you stuck with this ridiculous touch-sensitive stuff? I don't like it. The other thing that's touch-sensitive still is the buttons on the steering wheel. So again, you've got, well, sometimes they work, you know? And there's capacitive buttons here, so you get the haptic kind of feedback on the steering wheel, but not there. Just don't get it. It just doesn't, it's just not good enough, in my opinion. There we go. Anyway, that's, that's what it is. Uh, what else have they done? Well, as I say, pretty much it's just been a sort of like an upgrade in materials. Um, although there's some trim differences now. Um, there's only two trim levels in the range, um, which we'll go on to talk about later. Um, this is the lead-in, because it was very confusing, the range, with the ID3 earlier. There was about six or seven different trim levels. There's only two now, so it's a lot more kind of simple. But of course, you can still have options added on to them. Uh, storage is as you'd expect as I say a quite less big open cockpit feel so you've got your cup holder still enough space for my big coffee flask and a water bottle you've got a nice uh, little tray down there there's wireless charging for your mobile behind that and then you get this open um, sort of like area here which has got this this blind that slides across it and again you know just the feeling of the quality of that does feel a lot better um, than when you know the, from the first car so that's quite nice and then you've got this little kind of divider panel depending obviously on what you want to store in there you can section it all off if you want or just keep it nice and open so yeah there's there's a good amount of storage in the car good door bins good sized door bins um they're lined on the bottom they've got carpet on the bottom so that's quite nice and as i say yes it's a harder plastic but it does feel kind of well built you get this little map so this little net at the front there so you just kind of slot things down into there so that's quite nice and then you've got you've got your your armrests and um, fold down on the seat each individual seat has an armrest which is nice now the driving position um is very very good the seats are quite nice now as i say this is the base car um that i've got today but even so you know there's a nice like you know the fabric's quite nice on it um you i think you get the alcantara kind of inserts on the on the on the upper upper model which is quite nice 
or sort of like a four alcantara if you like but this cloth seat's quite nice they're quite supportive there's just enough length i would say in the squab to support the back of my legs the back of my knees which is quite nice and um, the steering column well that adjusts as well for reach and for rake as well and like as i say the bmw i3 the, the binnacle is attached to the column so no matter where you position it that moves with it and i do like that so you've always got a good clear view of that visibility is excellent visibility is very very good so you get a nice view out there's a lot of glass on the car you get these nice little front quarter lights as well to eliminate a kind of blind spot with that kind of sharply raked screen going down to the bottom the door mirrors they give you a good view back you know you're over the shoulder but um visibility is good oh, big slightly thicker c pillar but we've been used to that with golf um, so as I say, that's there, but it's not it's not horrific. It's all right. Um, and as I say, you, you know, you, you can't really struggle to find a good driving position. There's height adjustment in the seat, manual height adjustment as well. So pretty much everyone's going to get a good or going to be able to find their ideal driving position in here. Um, they have kind of retained sort of like bits of that kind of glossy piano black kind of plastic. You know the which just attracts dust and fingerprints and i don't really like it um you get it around here and also on the door panels but it's not a huge amount of it but there's enough of it that it's annoying me and the other thing that still annoys me is the lack of rear window switches why well, have this two-stage thing to go through press the rear and then put the window down at the back why do i not just have a switch pack with four switches why do i need to go through two stages to put a window down it just seems daft in my opinion but there you go but as I say, on the whole, the things that people criticise the interior for, such as the quality, um, the, sort of like the lower rent materials, that has been changed. And as I say, it's a welcome change because the, the cabin of the car now feels a notch above something like, say, the Citroen EC4, which is a car I really do like. But there is a better perceived um, quality that you get with the ID3. It's a more expensive car, so you'd expect that but now it actually feels like it should be a more expensive car, if that makes sense. Shame they've still, as I say, retained, you know, the silly switch gear on this. I don't know why we're having to wait again for another update for this bigger screen and for better uh, switches. Volkswagen's UMD said there's going to be a return to buttons in their cars. And I've seen some of that sort of, like, you know, uh, come through on sort of, like, you know, when we saw the new Volkswagen ID7. It's just a nice thing to see it. If they were going to face lift ID3, it would be nice for them to see in some of the buttons make an appearance here. But they haven't, and that's what we've got. But as I say, on the whole, what they've set out to do, they have done. There are now just two battery sizes available with the ID3. Either this one, which is a 58 kilowatt hour car, or you can go for the higher 77 kilowatt hour car. If it's this one you have, then you've got a WLTP range of up to 260 miles. The 77 kilowatt hour car could achieve well, WLTP figures, so they're, but they're saying about 347 miles, but certainly in excess of 300 miles, which is, again, good. But obviously, as you'd expect, for that size of battery. Now, they've also upped the charging speeds as well, but they're different depending on the battery. So the 58 kilowatt hour car has gone from 100 kilowatt charging speed to 120 kilowatt uh, charging speed, meaning your benchmark 10 to 80% is going to be taken in around about 35 minutes if you find a charger capable of delivering that. Um, the 77 kilowatt hour car can now take charging speeds of up to 170 kilowatts, but obviously its charging time will be around the same because it's a bigger battery that you're filling up. Um, charging the smaller battery up from your 7 kilowatt wall box is about nine and a half hours, but it will also take an 11 kilowatt charge as well. So if you've got the faster three phase electricity at home and a more powerful wall box, then you can drop that um, flat to full time down to around about six hours. Now, <clears throat> it's a single motor car and the motor is mounted at the rear, so it's rear wheel drive. Which actually doesn't uh, impede into the boot space, as we saw earlier, which is uh, quite nice. A uh, single motor that produces just over 200 brake horsepower, I think it's 201 PS, so whatever that works out in brake horsepower. And it means a 0 to 60 time of 7 seconds, which is plenty, plenty enough for, you know, a five door hatchback that weighs about 1800 kilos. Um, so I, 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 there's no complaints with regards to performance from me in that sense. There was rumour to be a GTX version with dual motors. Um, haven't seen as yet, but who knows, maybe something in the future of Volkswagen? Don't know. Right, what's it like to drive? Well, it's really nice actually. I remember, you know, my first drive 
in the ID3 when I first road tested it, when I picked it up Milton Keynes and took it back to Surrey, and it was, it is a nice car to drive. Um, there's, again, it's like the interior, like I was saying, there's a feeling of um, solidity to it. So if you're coming from a uh, previous Volkswagen product, or, you know, sort of like, you know, a Mark 7 Golf or Mark 7.5 Golf, something like that, then, you, you know, you, there's, there's that feeling in the car that it, it's nice, there's a weight behind it, um, the, 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 you know, that the chassis feels good. Um, you've got McPherson struts up front and a five-link uh, rear axle, so it handles well, if a little bit entertainment free, if that makes sense. If you were going to get up in the morning and go for a drive and you wanted to enjoy your drive, you're better off with a Megane, if I'm honest with you. The E-Tech Megane is the one I would still choose. Uh, in fact, the one I would choose in any of this class, to be honest with you, it's the one I think ticks the boxes for entertainment if you're a driver and you're looking for a driver's car. But that's not to say that this isn't good because it is. It's it, it's absolutely fine. I, I I like the way that you know the ID uh, the ID three drives. It is a nice car. You've got reasonably good brakes actually. They're better than I remember them being. Now there's still drums at the rear, which I thought at the time was a bit odd, but actually does make a little bit of sense because obviously with EVs, you're relying maybe a little bit more on the regenerative braking, which comes from the motor. Um, in those smaller sort of like braking instances, you know, the low speed braking things. So really, do you need big discs at the back? Maybe not. And of course, because they get used less, you don't really have the replacement costs of discs all round. So the brakes are okay, they're absolutely fine. Um, th there isn't too much adjustment when it comes to one pedal driving. You've got an, a B mode, which you get up on the, you know, on the, um, the gear selector up here. So you flick it from D into B and you can now feel the car kind of slowing up as I come off the pedal coming up to a roundabout so that's quite good uh, you know and in terms of the way the rest of it feels yeah as I say it's a nice car there's a, a, a reasonable weight to the steering it's good to respond there isn't sort of like a, a, a deadness to it straight ahead that you do get with some cars um, there's life there, you know. You can tell which way the wheels are actually pointing. So as soon as you, as soon as you move the wheel, the, you, the steering wheel, the, the front wheels respond in your hand. So that's good. I like that. As I mentioned when I was talking about the interior, there's really good visibility. You know, you're coming around sort of like these roundabouts at Milton Keynes and stuff that I'm at the moment, and you can just, um, you know, it's very very easy to see what's coming. You know, there's no sort of real kind of blind spots and your front kind of vision. As I say, you've got a slightly thicker rear pillar, um, like you do get and have always had on the Golfs as well. So that's no different. The way the car kind of picks up, the throttle response from it's good. As I say, I think there's enough performance here. I don't think you need much more, if I'm honest with you, in a car like this. Um, you know, remember, not to 60 in seven seconds, 200 horsepower. That was hot hatch material not that long since ago. So, you know, why do you need any more than that? I don't think you do. So I quite like the fact that it is just that sort of level of performance. It's just enough. Driving position is really nice as well. As I say, you do get a nice comfortable driving position. I do like these seats. The Pro S has, I think, diff slightly different seats to this car. Um, but these are nice. They, they do hold you just right and you don't tend to slide around in them. It's a quite a grippy material that Volkswagen have fitted. It does really remind me of, of a Mark II Golf for some reason, um, sort of like these seats. I don't know why, the Mark II, Mark III Golf, it just kind of reminds me of that car. But what's really nice, as I say, is when you're sitting here in the driver environment, is that uplifting quality. You can really see it. You can really see that what's sitting in front of you looks more expensive than it did in the previous car. And that's a big thing, as I say, especially if you've been a Volkswagen customer. That's the sort of thing you've been expecting. And that's where the original ID3 did probably let you down in that sense. So whilst there isn't a massive change in the way the car behaves out on the open road, there's an argument that says it didn't really need to change in that sense. Where it needed to change was that ownership um, proposition. You know the quality of the materials what you 
what you see and touch and feel when you get in the car. I just wish they'd got rid of those infernal slider controls because I still don't like them. I never have, and they're a load of rubbish. They're not illuminated at night, so please, Volkswagen, fix that. Otherwise, this is a decent job. I think they've done well with it. You can really tell the difference. It's very quiet, it's very refined. There's not a huge amount of wind noise. There's just enough, as I say, feel from the drive of the car to make you feel like you're doing something, you're, you're in control of it. It feels good on the road. The performance is as you would expect. I'm not sure you could ask for much more. Just maybe some proper buttons. Now, thankfully, as I said earlier, Volkswagen have simplified the ID3 range. There was too many trim levels in it before, and I could never get my head around what was what. So now you've basically got a choice. It's two batteries, two trim levels, and the trim level depend, obviously, on the battery size. So this one's a 58 kilowatt hour car, which means that it is a pro model. And the price for this one starts at £37,115, although this particular test car is optioned up, and that's now £43,355 on the road. Mm. If you move up to the bigger battery, the Pro S, that starts at 42870 So you can see, with a few options, it'd be very easy to get that car north of £45,000. So it, it's not as good value for money as, say, some of its rivals, such as the MG4, uh, which really is the value for money king in this sector, I think. But even the Renault Megane E-Tech is a little bit cheaper than that, and you know how much we really do like that car. However, the one saving grace that ID3 does have is Stellantis Group. Now they're coming out later this year, we're, later this year we're hoping to drive the new Vauxhall Astra electric and the Peugeot 308 electric. And that Vauxhall Astra, well that starts at over £40,000. So all of a sudden, this doesn't look quite as expensive maybe as you first thought. Alright, competition. Well, I've just mentioned quite a few cars there. Um, which are kind of direct rivals for the ID3. Because remember, when the ID3 first came out, you really only had the Nissan Leaf and the original Hyundai Ioniq, you know, the, five, the little five-door car that they had. That was kind of really the only two cars that you could say were maybe rivals for the ID3 if you were to look at it as a purely five-door, sort of like mid-sized family hatchback. Of course, we've seen a lot of changes since then. The MG4, of course, the value for money king. That's a main rival now for it, and probably one of its biggest rivals, given the, the value for money proposition that the MG offers. Our car of the year last year, the Renault Megane E-Tech, that's a, that's a contender in this market space as well, a C-sector, five-door family hatchback. And of course, the two cars that I've just mentioned that are coming out later this year, the Vauxhall Astra Electric and the Peugeot 308 Electric. Where they differ to those other cars is they offer a multitude of drivetrain options in one model. So in other words, the Astra is spun and the Peugeot are spun off um, internal combustion engine platforms. So you get the choice, petrol, petrol hybrid or electric. Whereas these cars, the Megane, the MG4 and ID3, they are purely battery electric vehicles. So they benefit from having that pure electric platform that they're built on. So they, that gives them a bit of an advantage. You might see other cars kind of creeping into this sector from different areas of the market. Maybe something like the Hyundai Kona, the new Kona, that small kind of crossover. That you might consider to be a rival for this car when it comes out. And of course, if you do that, then you have to also consider things like the Kia e Niro and maybe even, of course, the MG ZS. So there's plenty out there for your money if what you're after is a five-door family hatchback. So here's what we like and what we don't like about the newly revised Volkswagen ID3. Well, we like its styling. The range that's on offer from the, the both battery sizes. It has good refinement. Decent performance. And now we can see that uplift in interior quality. We're still not so keen on some of the interior controls, however. The fact that there are still more upgrades in the pipeline. It's not the best value for money next to some rivals. And of course, the higher ba battery capacity reduces the rear seat occupancy to just two people. The Volkswagen ID3 then. Have Volkswagen done enough to elevate it and to alleviate all those little faults that we kind of, all those little things that really irked us before? Have they done enough with it? 
Well, in some respects, yes. I mean, as I say, there is now a much better quality to the interior of the car, which, if I'm being honest, was probably the main bugbear that most people had with it. And I have to commend Volkswagen. This car probably wasn't due out, probably for another year, but customer feedback said there's just too many little things that are niggling us with it. And so Volkswagen rolled up the shirt sleeves and said, all right then, let's bring it forward and let's get it out there. So hats off to them for that, for listening to customer feedback and for bringing the car out in its revised form. Is it better? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I like the fact they've simplified the range now. I like the fact there's just the two battery size options. Um, Price-wise, it's not the value for money proposition of the MG4 or the Renault Megane, no doubt about it. But as I say later this year, with the, uh, the, the Astra and the Peugeot coming out at the prices they're mooted to be coming out at, it's not overly expensive either. It's somewhere in the middle. And that's kind of where this car sits. It's not a better car to drive than the Megane E-Tech. I still think that is the car of the class in terms of its drivability. It's not the value for money that, of course, the MG4 is, but it is still a very good car, and it's a very good Volkswagen now, which I think makes a world of difference. Thank you for watching yet another episode of Auto EV. As always, please remember to make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Then once you've done that, make sure you can also press the little bell button that's down below because then that way you'll be notified of when our next video goes live. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And of course, as always, make sure you leave us your comments as well down below. Do you have an ID3? Are you in the marketplace for this? Are you maybe going electric for the first time? Have we answered all your questions? Do you have any questions? Let us know in the comments down below. And of course, let us know what you think of the channel as a whole. Now, talking to the channel, remember, we're across all the social media uh, channels as well. So Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. Oh, it's not Twitter anymore, is it? It's X. Uh, so that, the, 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 the social platform formerly known as Twitter. Uh, Instagram, TikTok. So give us a follow there as well, because that helps us too. And if you're desperate to know more about the channel, or even more about electric vehicles, then stick on the YouTube channel because there's, well, there's a lot of videos now, trust me, um, out there, not just road test reviews, but used car reviews, electric icons, van reviews, and even motorbike reviews. All it means for me to say is thank you for joining me. Thanks for putting up with the slightly noisy Milton Keynes and the wet weather. Thanks for supporting the channel, and I'll see you again soon.